Today, I'm gonna to talk about the 12 ridiculous excuses narcissists will give you. Hi, I'm Nanette. Welcome back to Narcissism Exposed. So in one of my previous videos, I talked about the number one way that you can determine if somebody is a narcissist, and that is by handling conflict with a narcissist. And if any of you remember your time with the narcissist, hopefully not currently, but any time you have brought up a, a conversation to handle an issue or anything that needed attention, you know what I'm talking about. And these excuses that I'm going to reveal to you today, I'm sure most of you can do mental check marks as to how these have happened with you anytime you try to handle conflict with the narcissist that used to be in your life. And the first one is, you know that's how I am. So basically he or she is saying to you, so deal with it. So whether they're flirting or lying to you or ignoring you or cheating on you, you know, that's how they are, so deal with it. Hmm. The second one is, I'm the responsible one. It's your lack of responsibility that got us into this mess. So keep in mind with this one, anytime a narcissist has to acknowledge his or her part in something, that only puts them in the inferior position. So they have to lie in order to keep in the superior position and either deny what they did or put the blame on you. And the third one is, if you would have paid attention instead of forgetting all the time. Now, this is a form of gaslighting. That's right, because most of the time, the narcissist never even said anything for you to pay attention to, but they'll lie that they did and then gaslight you and make you think you're going crazy that how come you didn't remember it's because you didn't pay attention right now the fourth one the fourth excuse so this was my narcissist mother's favorite all-time line and it goes like this i just tell it like it is i speak the truth so if you don't like it, tough on you. That's basically was her attitude, was that she was the kingpin or queenpin, however you want to say it, and that she just tells it like it is. She tells the truth. But remembering now that the narcissist has a sick and twisted mind and perception and false narrative that they live by, of course in their world, they're always right. Hmm. And the fifth excuse, and this was another of my narcissist mother's favorite lines, okay? Buck up. If you're looking for sympathy here, you're not going to get it. Well, we already know that. So, but that was her, one of, another favorite line of hers is that we know that the narcissist has no empathy, has no compassion, and so they will bluntly say, well, you're not going to get any sympathy here. Basically making you feel like, you know, you're too needy or pathetic and, you know, buck up. Yeah. And the sixth excuse, knowing how narcissists always have to be right. They can never be wrong because they don't own their mistakes. They don't own their lies. They don't own their cheating. So their favorite line excuses but i'm right but i'm right so if you think about it if the narcissist is always right then you must be always fill in the blank you know even though they're rude belittling yelling at you calling your na you names when you confront the narcissist they feel justified in any way that they treat you, and in their mind, you deserve it. And you know that they always have this sick need to be in control. The seven excuse is, I don't have any of these problems with anyone else 
which is implicating that you're the one with all of the problems because all of the narc's friends and family and coworkers, all of their relationships are perfect and honky-dory. There's an old term. And the only problem he or she has is with you. Hmm. And the eighth ridiculous excuse that narcissists give is this. Oh, you don't know what you're talking about. How many times have any of you heard that? Oh, you don't know what you're talking about. Basically, sit down, be quiet, and don't say a word. Because the narcissist feels like they're superiorly educated and you lack any education. Even if though you have been like super educated and different levels or even street smart, it doesn't matter books, it could be street smart or just common sense. The narcissist always has to be one up on everybody. And so the narcissist, him or her, will call you and say, you just don't know what you're talking about. And the ninth ridiculous excuse is when the narcissist plays the victim and he, he or she says this, you made me do this or that. You made me do it. I did this because you made me do this. I called you that because you made me do it. I lied because you made me do it. I cheated because you made me do it. I stole from you because you made me do it. You get where I'm going with this. This is a big one. My ex narc fiance that I discarded used to use this one a lot. The 10th very ridiculous excuse is, now I'm not gonna use the actual word, so I'll use the softer word. It's the poop happens, so deal with it. Huh, now I wonder if we were to say that to the narcissist, how would they take that, right? This is just another bullying tactic and negation of how you feel and what your thoughts about something are. And an 11th excuse is this. Now, this is a very offensive, ridiculous excuse. And they'll say this. Well, you were just asking for it. This is based on the self-righteous, twisted thinking of the narcissist and another form of bullying and a total lack of responsibility. And the 12th ridiculous excuse is when they play the victim card. Well, I'm the one being attacked. Well, I'm the one that this happened to. Well, I'm the one, I'm the one, I'm the one. You get what I'm saying. And I know many of you could think of other ridiculous excuses. And if you can, jot them down in the comments below. Now, what are some reasons for these ridiculous excuses? Well, the first one is no accountability. The narcissist is well aware that they are putting the blame on you, but because in their mind, they feel superior to everyone, they feel justified. So they have no accountability and they believe that they are above the law. And the second reason for the ridiculous excuses is because they think that they're superior. So they are never at fault and taking the blame for anything would mean that, oh gosh darn, they're deficient in some way. The third reason for the ridiculous excuses is that because the narcissist feels that he or she is superior to everyone else, all of the inferior people around him or her should take the blame for them. Yeah, that's right, in their sick and twisted minds. And the fourth reason is that the narcissist has no emotional maturity and no depth of character. They have practiced blaming other people, they have been projecting and deflecting for decades, so they have absolutely no intention of changing that. Or I should say, changing that anytime soon. Look, narcissists are so full of shame, so when they are confronted, they are so full of fear, and they go into attack mode. They cannot face their own shame. And this is why most of their tactics 
involve pointing his or her finger at you. Look, never align yourself with somebody who has so little to no respect for you and is filled with contempt and disdain for you. Someone who does not value you will never appreciate you, no matter how much you do for him or her, how much more you love them, how much you tolerate, how much you keep coming back. Believe me, they don't value you. They will not appreciate you. And in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14, it says, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. And that narcissist is an unbeliever. I don't care how many times he or she professes themselves to be great Christians. You heard that word professes. They profess themselves to be great Christians. Anyone can say that they're anything. That doesn't mean that they are. And it goes on to say, for what fellowship or association or communion or partnership has righteousness with unrighteousness? And that word is lawlessness. There is no law within the mind and intention of the narcissist. They are what you call above the law in their heads. And what communion has light with darkness? None. Zero. You must remember that your light, the light in you, agitates, greatly agitates, the darkness in the narcissist. Look, you can't try hard enough to help a narcissist because he or she does not believe they need rehabilitation. You cannot turn them from their evil and dark ways. They must make that decision. But what you can do, according to God's word in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 5, is avoid such people. Why? Because God wants you safe. God wants you protected. God wants you to maintain your peace and to be on your path of truth and righteousness. So leave your comments down below. And if you found this helpful, do hit the like button. And if you haven't already subscribed, do hit the subscribe button. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so you'll be notified the next time I put out a video. And until next time, walk in peace and be blessed in your hearts.